depending upon the time period, uh, uh, Samuel, uh, 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 the second son of Moses, uh, lived in Edgewood when Moses moved up to here to uh, the Stevens estate. Um, and then a cousin, Ann Stevens Smith, uh, lived in Captain Nat Stevens' house down by the center. And cousin Kate Stevens uh, lived in the Carlton Stevens' house, also on Academy Road. And all together there were about, uh, in, in 2008, there were some 14 um, houses that had involved family members or close associates. So Moses, whether he attended or not, uh, eventually uh, established a, a small community of uh, closely knit family and, and closely associated members. One thing that uh, has always impressed me, uh, there were many uh, the mill owners who made enormous fortunes and, and built mansions like this one, but I don't think many of them has given, have given as much back to their community as, uh, as Moses did, and, uh, and the rest of the Stevens family in terms of giving away open land, uh, building historic, uh, or preserving historic areas. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that, because I think that's very significant. Yes, uh, I, the, the tradition of, of my family is to give back uh, to the community of North Andover, certainly because they were original settlers. That certainly was a, a, a central uh, aspect of that. Many of the other uh, textile mill owners who came to Andover as a, a wonderful place as a residence and built their residences in Andover and North Andover, uh, had their mills in Lawrence, or a few of them had them, their mills in, in uh, Andover, North Andover. But many of those families came from away, as we say today, and uh, there was, there was uh, perhaps never the same feeling for the town as there was uh, by the Stevens family who, who established the business here right in town and have always lived in town. So it seemed uh, very appropriate for the family to give back to the community that uh, had uh, enabled them to thrive and okay. so much. There's a library. Yes, that, that included the Stevens Memorial Library. And the park behind the library. That's right. The Patriot Park. I didn't, I'd forgotten that, the Patriot Park. Yes, that part of the land that uh, Moses Stevens and his wife owned was the land that extended on into uh, the place where the Stephen Memorial Library is. And then going to the, to the old center common. Can we um, just clarify on the Stevens Library? Is that the building didn't exist, you donated the land and they built and the library? And paid the money for the library. Okay. Can, can we kind of roll that into a statement? Yeah, yeah you have more knowledge of that than <laughs> I do, perhaps. <laughs> but well, they donated the land yeah. and then donated money to, uh, to build the library. library. Yeah. Well, so one, of, one of the things our family did. Okay, yeah, just ask me about it and I'll, say, I'll repeat okay. that. Um, yeah. One significant thing that the Stevens family did was to donate land and the money to build Stevens Memorial Library. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. One of the contributions that the family made to the town, and particularly uh, in honor of Moses T. Stevens, uh, was the establishment of the library at about the time he died, uh, eight, uh, uh, 1907. Mm -hmm. And they gave the the land, uh, Moses' land, and also. Uh, a considerable sum to help build the library at that time. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Right. Um, does that wrap it up? Um, you, you tell me. I mean, if you if you, if you exhausted your uh, your notes, that's fine. If you want to, I sort of come from the end here. I didn't know if you got the end. 
if you want to, um, if there's anything, you kind of got into it last time a little bit, just um, if you have any fond memories of this building. It sounded like you were you were guests here more. Yeah. But I mean, if there's anything, since you've started to do this, maybe there's, you know, right. memories starting to pull back to you. Right. Right now, well, the, the uh, uh, yeah, you can ask me, uh, let me think about that just in a minute, and then yeah. you can ask me yeah, a question. Yeah. It's, you know, just any, you know, if there's anything that you recall, it's all. It's always good to... Where was the peacock? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping that there's a picture because it could go, it could have stood in one of these alcoves near a window or something. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Well, keep you your eye here? out. <laughs> Did you ever up here for any parties or anything? No, I was... Uh, 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 well... I know you were just a lad. But yeah, <laughs> in uh, 19... 46, uh, well. Okay, what, what do you remember uh, about visiting this, yes. this mansion? Well, it so happened that during the 30s and early 40s, uh, when Nathaniel was living in the house, in, in the Osgood Hill house, um, um, mother had moved us to Cambridge, Massachusetts. So we visited out here only occasionally. I remember we went, came for several Thanksgivings to Edgewood, where where my fa my grandfather's wife was living. Uh, my grandfather had already died, so it was just grand grandmother's house, and uh, we had fun with our cousins and playing playing uh, uh, touch football after Thanksgiving dinner and so on and so forth on the lawn. I was very impressed about that. And then we would, from time to time, visit up here at Osgood Hill, uh, and uh, we would come and, uh, of course, uh, trying to understand our relationship to this giant mansion was very hard because we lived in an urban uh, area and uh, this was an entirely different world, but it was obviously beautiful and we, uh, we uh, were met, uh, you know, by a, a door person who opened the door to us and we were brought in and escorted to where um, great uncle Nat was. And of course he was great uncle Nat and that meant uh, uh, some austerity, I guess, a feeling of austerity or distance. And uh, what's more, he was a very tall man with a very big booming voice. I remember that, and uh, he uh, he would be very kind and and say things, but they didn't sound very gentle. Booming <laughs> voice, so I didn't know what to make of him. Really, he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't the fatherly type. He had they had never had children, and that may have been part of the the sort of atmosphere. But he seemed very kindly and welcoming, and so we visited you know, once in a while, once every couple of years or something like that. So it was, and of course the, the mansion was uh, out of my knowledge. I hadn't, hadn't visited many places like this. And so, of course, the, the excitement was the organ each time because to have an organ in the house and so on, and then to have it working and for us to be able to play it a little bit was the big highlight of the visit. Yes, sir, I played it just a little bit. <laughs> um, we, I mean, from I don't, from urban life to coming out into the country. I mean, is it just was it just fun to get lost in the woods, or you know, any anything like that, or is or was it the immensity of the building? Well, it's it's more complicated than mm -hmm. that because uh, the our connection with the the farm and the community was multiple in the sense that. My grandmother was at Edgewood, and Nathaniel was up here. This was in the 30s. And then uh, I had uh, uh, uncle, my uncle Abe, my, my father's brother, uh, was living with his uh, mother in Edgewood. And uh, my father had died when I was very young. So, uh, but before, uh, uh, earlier, uh, before we were born, my mother and father built uh, the house that uh, 
my mother called Sunny Ridge, which still stands, which is up in the woods on Osgood Hill. And so when we came out to visit, sometimes we'd go up and see what was happening with funny Sunny Ridge because my mother hung on to it. She couldn't bear to sell it. And so she rented it out uh, many years to uh, various people. Uh, and we would go up there and would perhaps walk up to the top of Half Mile Hill and look off uh, and see, um, see the beautiful view up there. And so, and then always, whenever we came to North Andover, we'd visit the farm because I always wanted to see what was going on. And we'd get rides sometimes in the wagons. And uh, so uh, I, I'm not sure whether I ever ever made it, but I always thought it would be a great image for a photographer, and that was for a kid to be sitting beside this uh, uh, farm, uh, farmer on the manure wagon as he went happily spreading manure <laughs> across the fields, <laughs> because we would see many times the, uh, the manures, uh, fa uh, manure spreaders being loaded outside the dairy barn and uh, send it going off to the fields to do their job. And then we came out and saw the ice cutting um, uh, by, on the lake, and uh, there was an ice house on the farm, and they brought in, they filled that, and I went up and visited the ice house in the middle of August and found the ice, and it really was there. There was a lot of it still there, and it was a very effective a storage system. It was it was fun. We chipped some out. The one that was around on the other side of, uh, of the lake. No, was the, there was an ice house actually here on the property. All right, let's talk about ice. Ice was important for commercial purposes, mm -hmm. and it was also important for uh, the farm community. And by that time, the farm community, uh, the, all the houses on the farm community had ice boxes in their houses and therefore they needed ice delivered every week to uh, keep the ice box cool and so the farm supplied the ice for all of Stevens community and possibly for others but the big ice house on Lake Kochikowik which was at the north end of the lake uh, this was a commercial uh, venture and uh, this uh, uh, selling New England sold ice to the Southeast Asia, to India and to uh, South America and uh, all over the world. It b became a very big enterprise. And I don't know the history of this particular enterprise here in Boston, I mean in, in North Andover, but North Andover unfortunately was so far from the sea relative to the other <laughs> ice houses in New England, so maybe it didn't uh, Become part of the big trade. Well, but even just the services alone of supplying, you know, from their from their lake on their property. Yeah, right? well, yeah, yeah. and the Lawrence, the whole mill, and right. the whole mill community. That's great. So, yeah. yeah. That's great. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's great. All great information. All Thanks right. again. Well, it's not as good as it might be, but anyway, it's something, and I 